Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how Microsoft finally in C Sharp 13 decided to make the params keyword actually useful. Now, most developers have a love-hate relationship with the params keyword because on a functionality perspective, it is really, really cool. And if you don't know what it is, don't worry, I'm going to show what it is in this video. But from a usability perspective, it's very limited. And from a performance perspective, it's also very bad. So Microsoft finally addressed all that and I'm going to show you all that in this video. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Okay, so much what I have here. I have a .NET 9 application over here. And first, I want to just show you what the params keyword is. Let's say I have a method that can summarize numbers. So I have int A, int B, then I have int C and so on. What I can do is I can say return uh, int a plus b plus c and that's all nice and fun and I can say sum equals some numbers and I can pass one two three and that will work and I'm gonna get the sum the problem is that what if I want to add just two items well then I have to make an overload for that and I have to say uh, a b uh, okay what if I want to have then four numbers or oh, I have to go and say a b a C and then D and so on and that gets a bit annoying so what you can do in C shop is why don't I just have an integer array called numbers and then I can just say return the sum of those numbers like this and then it doesn't matter how many I have all I have to do is use the nice cool syntax of C sharp 12 and I can say something like this which by the way wasn't really a thing until very recently what you would have to do is you have to say new int uh, array and you would have to pass down the numbers like this which as you can see it, it doesn't read nice it reads very badly it reads very poorly and from a performance perspective you have to allocate an array every single time now we're going to address that in a second but we can get this to be better with the c sharp 12 syntax like this or we can use what's called the params keyword. So the params keyword, if you have an array in C Sharp, you can go ahead and say params of that array. And what that allows you to do is have an implicit conversion to an array by just passing a comma separated list of items. So this behind the scenes will be converted into an array because I use the params keyword. And that's really, really cool and nice. However, this historically has been very bad for performance for a few reasons. First, it's how params is allocated, but that's also the problem that an array in C sharp is a reference type and all the values in that reference type will be boxed. So it can't be as fast as having n amount of values in that signature. But besides that, a lot of code uses it because the trade-off of functionality performance can be great if you use something like this. However, you can't use any other type of enumerable with this feature. If I go and I say that I want to have a list of integers, well, I can't, I just can't do that. If I say I want to have an enumerable of integers, it just won't work, which heavily limits what you can do with this because sometimes you just want to pass a type, sometimes you want to use a more narrowed down type. It just isn't as useful as it could be until C Sharp 13, because now in C Sharp 13, we're getting the option to do that. If I upgrade the project to use preview of C Sharp 13, as you can see now, this code will compile and I will get the sum. This will also work with lists. So if I do that and I pass the integer, this will work. It still works with arrays, of course, so I can still have an int array as well and the coolest thing and the best thing about this by an absolute mile and a half is that you can now also have spans and the fact that we can have spans here not only will make your code significantly faster because of how spans are allocated on the stack and they don't have to be boxed or be allocated on the heap they can just be extremely extremely performant and Microsoft is adding tons of overloads in the BCL and they're using this internally to make .NET significantly faster too. You're gonna see tons of this and this works both with span and with read-only span, of course. So both of these will work. However, opening this feature up comes with a drawback and the drawback has to do with performance. Not every approach will be equally as fast. You're gonna have arrays and neurons and lists and those things between themselves won't be equally as performant. And I'm gonna show you what I mean in this video with benchmarks 
but you are getting a great deal of flexibility. The type of flexibility that introducing something like GraphQL into your architecture to replace some of your traditional REST APIs can bring. And that's exactly why we just released a seven and a half hour course on Dome Trend called Getting Started with GraphQL in .NET. And it's delivered by Michael Steib, which in case you don't know, is the creator of the hot chocolate library that is how you can do GraphQL APIs in .NET which is exactly what Microsoft is using to build their own GraphQL APIs. And they regularly talk with Michael to get feedback on how they can build their system. So you're getting the best advice you can possibly get to learn how to build GraphQL APIs. And Michael is also part of the steering committee in GraphQL, not just in .NET, but for every developer around the world. So he basically decides with other people as well where GraphQL is going in the same way that Mads decides where c -sharp is going or David Fowler decides where ASP.NET Core is going. It's a great opportunity and the first 300 of you can use discount code GraphQL20 at checkout or use the link in the description to get 20% off. But before I show you the benchmarks, I want to show you something really cool. We can go ahead and create a new type over here and I'm just going to call that numbers a collection or something. Let's do something like that. Now, all I want to show you is how you can create now your own types like this to use with the params keyword. Now, if I take this type as it is and I pass it down, as you might imagine, this won't compile. It says that the params parameter must have a valid collection type. What does that mean? Well, you might think that it's all about going and creating an enumerable of type integer here. And by just doing that and implementing the interface, then everything will work. However, this is not quite the case. The error should change now and we get that number collection does not contain a definition for add. That means that we need to have over here an add method, public void add of the type we want to add and the type is integer. And of course, we're going to have to implement it, but for now, we're going to leave it as it is. But once I add this method, as you're going to see, this will go away. And now the add method is what's going to be called behind the scenes to add these items in that collection. And I can go as far as actually fully implementing this by creating a list of numbers over here, which I'm going to initialize uh, with an empty uh, a list. And then I'm going to say add the items add the numbers and then to return the enumerator i'm going to say return the enumerator here and then return the get enumerator and that's it and now as you're going to see very very quickly over here i can just print the sum so i'm going to stick over here in that numbers collection a breakpoint i'm going to put one here and one over here and then i'm just going to say debug this so we can see how it works behind the scenes. So stick one over here too. So application is running. We're going to step over this and you can see immediately we go into the numbers collection. We initialize that and then we go into add. First, we have one, then we have two, then we have three. All that is happening behind the scenes. And that should give you an idea about how this is going to perform. Now I'm going to go straight into adding some benchmarks for this because calling these add methods can't possibly be very performant, right? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and create a benchmarks class and then I'll go ahead and add my benchmarks. So I'm going to have five benchmarks here. Summarize the array and I'm going to use the sum method when I can because it is vectorized. It's not going to make any difference between having the sum method and having a loop for just 10 items. I've already tested this. Uh, if you want to just grab the code and do it yourself, you're more than welcome to. But now we have the array. We have an I enumerable. We have a list. Then we have our custom numbers collection. And then we have the span, which just for argument's sake, because I'm sure many people will ask in the comments, we're going to make us a read-only span to get the best performance I possibly can. This will use a loop. Again, this won't make any difference between the comparisons. If those things were using loops would get the same performance. I'm going to turn this into release mode and I'm going to go to program.cs, delete all that and say benchmark runner. And I'm going to run those benchmarks and see what I get back because a cool feature on the surface level doesn't necessarily mean a feature you should be using in its entirety without any context. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get back. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, the performance looks interesting. First, the array, what we had 
is 8 nanoseconds and 64 bytes of memory. Then the enumerable is 25 nanoseconds and 120 bytes of memory. Quite a big jump. It's three times slower, basically, and twice as memory inefficient. Then the list is pretty well performing. So we go from 8 to 12.8, which is okay, and 96 bytes of memory. Quite the jump again, but not a massive one. The sum of numbers is 70.3 nanoseconds, the custom type we made, and 280 bytes of memory. To be fair, it was pretty inefficient. You can really optimize that if you want to, but I'm just proving a point. Do not take this lightly. It can bite you. And then we have the sum of span, which is the fastest by far, read-only span. 2.1 seconds way faster than the array and no memory allocated because that span is a value type there's no boxing involved there's no memory being allocated those values are being passed down as values not as references extremely performant which is why i believe this change will make dotnet in general way way faster i think it's a great feature i think now you can basically use params and i would highly recommend you do use them with spans when you can it is really really incredible and i can't wait to see how the api can be taken further to allow for even more flexibility but now i want to know from you what do you think about this and have you been using params where if you have please leave a comment down below let me know well that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding